Hello and welcome to this video about making soluble salts. In previous videos we've looked at how we make salts and how we name salts and this video introduces the word soluble which is really important when you're talking about salts. All soluble means is that it dissolves in water to make a solution. So a soluble salt will be one that dissolves in water. Um, the opposite of that is an insoluble salt, which we'll talk about in another video, but insoluble salts um, uh, because it's opposite, it means it does not dissolve in water. And we need to be able to recognise when a soluble or insoluble salt is formed and how we would then go on to separate that salt. Now the important thing that we need to know about um, for understanding soluble and insoluble salts is the state symbols that come with equations. And these will always be um, next to the reactants and products in the equation. So they might be slightly underneath or just to the side. Um, but they tell you whether um, the substance is a solid, which is an S, a liquid, which is L, a G, which is gas, and a Q, which is aqueous. Now, all of these first three are pretty self-explanatory, solid, liquid, and a gas. Um, all aqueous means is it's in solution, or hence it's dissolved in water. Okay, so whatever that product is, it's actually dissolved in water. So in solution or dissolved in water. Now this is really important because if we see a salt with the symbol AQ next to it, we should be able to work out that it's actually a soluble salt because AQ means it's in solution, it's dissolved in water. So let's have a look at this equation here. We've got sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid making sodium chloride plus water. So just a couple of recaps, this is a, a neutralisation equation reacting a base with an acid and to get the name of the salt we take the metal, hydrochloric acids make chlorides so we make sodium chloride plus water. But we need to work out whether sodium chloride is soluble or not and if it is soluble how will we separate it? Well, if we look at this state symbol here, it tells us that that sodium chloride is in solution. So it tells us that it's dissolved. So if something is dissolved in water, the way we separate it is a process called crystallization. And in the, the crystallization process, you would put your solution of salt in water in an evaporating basin and you would heat that up over a tripod or um, leaf and let the water evaporate, depends on how quickly you wanted to do it, but you could use a Bunsen burner and heat up the um, solution that you've got, so Bunsen and a tripod. You need a gauze on here, those um, metal gauzes. And you would put your solution inside um, to be heated up. So it won't be purple but I'll just draw it on here so you can see it. And if you imagine something that's dissolved in water on here, as soon as you heat this up the water is going to evaporate and when the water evaporates it will leave the salt crystals behind. So the water evaporates um, leaving the salt crystals behind. So you may well have done this in school before with something like copper sulfate crystals where you've got a blue solution here you evaporate the water and leave um, the crystals to completely dry 
and you will end up with copper sulfate blue crystals in here. So whenever you've got a soluble salt, one that dissolves in water, you have to do the crystallization process to separate that salt. Now some key things to look at. Sometimes in questions they'll talk about crystals. And if they do, that's a clue to you that to get those crystals you'd have to do crystallization and therefore it must be a soluble salt. So look out for these clues. Look out for the um, main clues talking about soluble salts is this state symbol here, like I said before, and if they start to mention crystals. You perhaps might have to write a method to describe how you would separate these soluble salts. So keep this equipment in mind and keep that word crystallization in mind as well. OK, so that was the basics of making soluble salts. Here I'm going to go into a little bit of more detail, which sometimes makes things really confusing for people. And it's all to do with that word soluble. And the reason it gets difficult is because not only do questions talk about soluble salts, they also talk about soluble in terms of whether the base you're using is soluble or insoluble. So just to make clear what I mean, in these neutralization reactions that we're talking about to make these salts, we're talking about reacting a base with an acid to make a salt. And in this case, so I'm just going to put it here to make it clear, the salt that we're talking about is a soluble salt. So I'll just put soluble underneath. And water. That's what we talked about in the last um, little bit about then you'd have to separate the salt using crystallization and so on and so on. But the thing that gets confusing is the idea that this part here, the base, can be either insoluble or soluble itself. So the base can either dissolve in water, the base could be a soluble base, or it could not dissolve in water, it could be an insoluble base. And if you remember back to a video on acids and bases, a soluble base is called an alkali. So then the questions start to get really confusing because we're talking about is the base soluble or insoluble and is the salt that you make soluble or insoluble? So when you do these questions, do read them um, very carefully. Because there's slightly different methods that we need to do to make this soluble salt, depending on whether the base that you use dissolves in water or does not dissolve in water. So let's start off using an alkali or, or a soluble base. Now this one's um, quite simple. With an alkali, when you react the alkali with the acid, you need to check to see if the solution's neutral before you do the crystallization process. So you can use an indicator, for example, universal indicator, um, to see that the acid and alkali have completely reacted. So over here, use an indicator. And I'll just put here to remind you, for example, universal indicator. To show that all the acid has reacted with the alkali or the soluble base to make the salt solution. And then you would go on to do the crystallization process like we discussed, discussed before. So that one extra step you need to think about if you're using a soluble base to make your soluble salt. Now if we look at using an insoluble base plus an acid to make a salt and water. 
there's one extra step that we need to do with that one as well. So if it doesn't dissolve in water, you have to add excess base until um, no more will react. So keep adding base, keep adding as much base as you can until no more can react with the acid. Because you want to make sure that as much um, base as you can is reacting with the acid to make as much salt as you can. Otherwise you'll have excess bits of acid and you're not making enough salt. So keep adding the base until no more, but then because it's insoluble you can have bits of that base floating around. And you can't just leave that in and put it in an evaporating dish, otherwise you'll end up with perhaps a mixture of the salt and the insoluble base when you heat it up and leave it. Um, leave the crystals to form. So after you've added excess base you then need to do one further step which complicates it slightly um, because you would then need to filter off the excess solid base. So filter the excess solid base. So just by using a funnel and a filter paper inside into a conical flask for example and in here you'd end up with the excess base and here you would end up with the solution containing the soluble salt and water which you can then go on to heat up on an evaporating basin. So this bit does complicate things with questions you need to think about whether the question is telling you about the solubility of the base or talking about the solubility of the salt. The bit that gets confusing is when we look at insoluble salts in, in the next video that we're going to use the filtering process and that's the bit that gets confusing. So just have a really good look at this, make some good notes on it. Um, I'm going to ask you a question next which is going to bring these two ideas together. So here's a question for you to think about, bringing together um, the ideas discussed so far in this video. First of all, you've got copper oxide is an insoluble base. So like I would suggest in any exam question, you should be underlining the key parts. An insoluble base. And I might just give myself a couple of hints here. If I see that insoluble base, I need to add excess base. And the next bit says, how is copper oxide used to make copper sulfate crystals? I see that keyword crystals again. I need to be thinking about crystallization and the fact that it is a soluble salt. So really do this. Um, the exam questions that you get, they're a bit more complex. You can underline the key bits and start just writing some extra notes. Um, as long as you don't write anywhere near where you're going to put your answer, that's absolutely fine. So you can scribble anywhere you want on your exam paper, especially when the questions are difficult like this. So just pause the video, have a think about this and um, try and answer it yourself and then come back and see if you get it right. So this question is a tricky one. It will draw from your understanding of naming salts, making salts and making soluble salts. So let's start off with first of all, how do we get from copper oxide to copper sulphate? So copper oxide needs to react with sulfuric acid to make copper sulphate and water. Now because this copper sulphate makes crystals that gives us a clue that it, we need to do the crystallization process and the fact that it's a soluble salt. Secondly we've written down a note here before to say that because that's an insoluble base we're going to have to add excess base and then filter that off first of all. So that is the reaction that we need to do. 
And if we were just to bullet point the method um, that we would need to do to make copper sulfate crystals, we would add excess copper oxide to sulfuric acid. We then need to filter off that excess and we then need to describe how we do the crystallisation process. So then we would heat the remaining solution in an evaporating dish over a Bunsen burner and we'd leave that to cool all the water would evaporate so and water would evaporate And then finally, we'd end up with our copper sulfate crystals. So very well done if you've got most of those um, points down in your answer and that you've managed to correctly make copper sulfate crystals using that insoluble base. In the next video we're going to be talking about making insoluble salts, so ones that don't dissolve in water. If you liked this video please like below and subscribe and then join us in the next video.